Hello, okay, this is the second time I'm making this video because again, my uh, my stupid microphone uh, was not plugged in correctly, so the past one did not record with audio and it's getting to really annoy me. So, uh, sorry if I. Nah, never mind. Um, okay, so um, in this video, I'm actually kind of excited because I get to use Peach, the color, uh, which is fun. Actually, no, I think I, I might use uh, Periwinkle. Yay, Periwinkle, okay. That's a nice color. Anyway, um, so, as you can see, I already made this video, but it has no sound. But, this is a preview of what we're going to learn today. Yay, fun stuff. So, what's going on? Uh, we're going to talk about the graphs of the, um, uh, what's it called? I can't really think of the name of it. It's the, like, the stress versus strain uh, curve, and basically all that is is that uh, if this is the stress up here, and this is the, uh, the strain, basically what this means is that if you want to find out um, how much stress something can endure um, before it reaches this much strain, basically um, how much strain uh, is required I'm sorry, how much stress you have to put on something in order to um, strain it however much, you use this kind of graph. That's why this is set up like this. And um, a typical stress versus strain graph will look something like this. You'll have a line for um, a part of it, and then past that you'll have... Oops, hold on. You have something along the lines of that. And then it'll go up. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll have something like that. Ooh, there. And that should go up. And then it'll kind of come down. And then... Uh, it might maybe look like something like that. I don't know. It, it depends on the, uh, on the material. Uh, basically, then you end up getting this uh, this straight down line. Um, and what does all this mean? Okay, well, uh, there's going to be one easy thing that you're going to have to remember, relatively easy, um, and that's the uh, the three two one rule that I'm making up. The three two one, and that's three points. Three points. Uh, two regions regions and then one slope and this is uh, for vocab I'm talking about now I uh, just to let you know this video won't be very math intensive because there's going to be a lot of uh, concept explanations um, but 3, 2, 1 points, region, slope, PRS um, so basically, uh, if you uh, think about it, you've got three, and then you c you're counting down. That part you can handle. Uh, and then you've got P. Q is stupid, so we're going to ignore that one. Then it's just going down the alphabet. So P, R, S. Three P, two R, one S. Three points, two regions, one slope. Um, uh, but I'm actually going to tackle this in the reverse order. Um, so I'm going to start out. I'm going to start out doing one, two, three. Uh, so what is 1? What is the slope of this line? Well, uh, let's examine what this is. You probably know the answer, but I want you to understand the answer. So let's say you look at two points. How much stress is required to get from one point to the next? Well, that's just some value uh, of sigma. And then how much strain is, requi is um, required to get from one value to the next? Well, that's the, uh, that's the strain. That's the epsilon. Um, so this is equal to how much this increased, the, the, uh, the y value, or the, the change in y value, over how much this increased, over the, the change in x. Uh, or in other words, it was how much it rose over how much it went sideways, so it was the, the rise over the run. Or the slope. And, um, 
for everyone who has taken any kind of algebra, I'm sure every single one of you out there has seen uh, the equation y equals, well, that's an ugly y, y equals mx plus b, right? This is the standard uh, slope-intercept equation, and m here is the slope of this line, right? Okay, well, if m is the slope, think m for modulus. Modulus. Because the, the slope of this line is the elastic modulus, so that's just e. The slope of that line is e, which is the elastic modulus, uh, and that's our stress over our strain. Uh, that's what that is. Um, so this little equation here holds true up until uh, this point, which we'll get to in a sec. But um, basically for this entire area right here, it's linear. Kind of like um, it follows uh, one of Hooke's laws that got covered, um, that we covered in physics, or that I covered in my physics videos. And that's what was that fx equals k times x. F the force that a spring can do, do um, can apply is equal to the constant of the spring times the distance that you're displacing it. And that does have a lot of uh, connections to this. Um, this is also called the Hooke's law, and it's no co or this is. It's no coincidence that Hooke came up with both of them. They're very very similar. Uh, or maybe he didn't. I don't know. I don't study history, but uh, it looks like they're both called Hooke's Law. So, uh, But basically, if you uh, know your y equals mx plus b, if this is y, then the k is m, and then it's not the negative k, sorry. This is y, then k is m, and x is x, and b is 0, right? Because it's plus 0. So uh, the k is our slope. Our k is our um, modulus of elasticity. Um, so what you end up getting is that the y, the stress, is equal to the modulus of elasticity um, times the x value, the strain. And that makes sense, because if you multiply both sides by i, you get e times this funny little epsilon character is equal to the sigma. So it's cool that that kind of works out just with our y equals mx plus b equation. Um, but the key thing to notice here is that this is linear, right? This just makes a line. So this means that if you want double the strain, you need double the stress. So I purposely made these about uh, double each other. If you want to get double the strain here, the stress values are going to double. Um, so this holds true for uh, a certain region, and this is called the elastic region. This is one of the two regions you need to know. And this elastic region, you know, we label this, uh, I never make these text boxes big enough, elastic region. And the elastic region is basically the entire region where um, if you stretch it, it'll, up until this point, it'll go back to its normal size. So any t anywhere within this region, it'll go back to its normal size and shape and everything, and um, also it's that proportional um, uh, relationship. Double one, and it doubles the other. Uh, it's, it makes a line in this region. So it's called the, the linear region, the proportional region, or the elastic region. Or also the Hooke's Law region, because that's where this holds true. Um, and then the very peak of that region, the very peak of that elastic region, is called the uh, it's called the elastic limit. The elastic limit. And what this is is just this. The elastic limit is basically how much stress you can put on something, uh, or rather, how much strain it can endure before it won't return to its regular shape. And basically, what that just means is like. Uh, kind of how much can you pull a rubber band, or rather, maybe a better example would be, uh, how much can you pull on maybe your headphone wires and have them still go back to the regular shape before it uh, starts getting permanently stretched out? Or with a rubber band, how much can you pull on a rubber band before it 
loses its, uh, or silly bands. Silly bands are the perfect example. Silly bands have this, lo um, this long linear region where you can keep on pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and eventually they go back to their original shape. When you get to this point, then, uh, that's where they lose their original shape and, uh, structure, and then it enters this curvy area right here. And this area, this curvy area, here, let me take out Hooke's Law and move it over here. This curvy area is called the plastic region. Plastic region. Uh, and elastic waistbands, stretchy, if you pull out the waistband in your pajama pants or whatever, uh, it'll go back to its original size, it'll stretch back, and once it reaches the plastic region, it won't stretch back. That's like when you take your, your slinky and you pull it and pull it and pull it, and then when you let go of it again, it, um, it doesn't go back to its original size. It has like a little bump or the loop in it or whatever like that. Um, so that's what the, the plastic region is. Um, and then there's two significant points here. There's one that here that's called the ultimate stress, or the ultimate strain, and that's literally just the maximum point. That's all that really corresponds to. Um, and then the third is the failure point, which that's when the material starts failing. That's when uh, it breaks, the, m the wood breaks, the metal breaks, whatever, and the piece snaps into. Um, I think I'm, I covered everything, right? Yeah, so this is the failure point where the material breaks. The ultimate stress or the ultimate strength is just the maximum point on that graph. Um, and anything over that just makes this basically break. Uh, the plastic region is the region in which it will not return to its original size. Basically, you stretch it out and then it stays at whatever length you stretch it out to. Uh, so, like, that's what happens with uh, a lot of cop like wires and stuff. And then the elastic region is anywhere that you can stretch it and it go ba goes back to its original shape. That's the elastic region. And the elastic limit is the limit to that region. That should also make sense. And then we said that the slope of this line is equal to y equals mx plus b, m, the modulus, the elastic modulus, or sigma over um, epsilon. That's our slope of this line. So that's the main things I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, I'll show you a couple basic uh, graphs as well as in, uh, in a uh, quick example problem. Um, hopefully that helped. Uh, so uh, I'll see you then.